Hi, friend. Recently, my friend, who lives in another city, asked me to make a power supply for his old electric screwdriver. I could not refuse friend's request and began to work at once. Many will have a question. Why make screwdriver tied to mains? After all, it is good because it is autonomous, but many had old screwdrivers with dead nickel cadmium batteries. Throwing them away is a pity, buying new batteries is expensive, but in this condition they are completely useless, so many prefer to rework old screwdrivers for mains. My old screwdrivers, which I had been working long time ago, I gave to relatives who needed them. And for myself, I left a cheap Chinese screwdriver, which has been working for a year quite well. Well, let's go to the point. I have already shown in one of the videos how it is possible to assemble a powerful power supply for a screwdriver based on a converted electronic transformer. And in order not to repeat, I decided this time to make a power supply on cheap IR2153. Well, I'm not gonna be cunning since half of the channel is filled with impulse power supplies on this chip. But what can I do if the power supplies on it are simple and cheap? Probably cheaper is only electronic transformer. So, this is a classic circuit with two capacitors connected to the midpoint. The alternating voltage is extinguished by the resistor, rectified, filtered and fed to the micro circuit. A pair of switch transistors, in my case, is high voltage and channel FETs 10 and 60, 600 volts, 10 amperes. The output rectifier is unipolar with an average point, built on the basis of such a diet assembly with 45 volts and 30 amperes. At the output, after the rectifier is a pair of capacitors of 35 volts, a large capacity is basically not needed, but it is advisable to take with a low internal resistance. Well, in principle, almost everything. The most important is the transformer. You can take it from any computer power supply. I found this. You can use in transformers of the extended type, such of input in blocks ATX 450 watts. It is also not necessary to rewind them. Standard windings will allow obtaining a voltage at the output of about 12 to 15 volts. But in my case there were problems, because I forgot to mirror vertically the transformer on the board template, and when I noticed the board was already etched, and the half of the circuit was assembled. The printed circuit board for this device can be ordered from the GLCPCB factory. I have several boards for similar units manufactured at the GLC factory. I think no need to tell you about the quality of the performance. Everything is clear. Anyone can order boards simply by downloading the original Gerber file. The cost of the board starts from $2 for 10 pieces. A link to the GLCPCB website can be found in the description. I had to rewind the transformer. I heated it with a soldering iron for about 10 minutes, then carefully disconnected the core holes, removed all windings, and wound new ones. In the case of using transformers of the same size from computer and taking into account the operating frequency of the IR2153 chip, the primary winding contains about 40 turns with a 0.8 mm wire. The secondary winding is wound with a calculation of one turn of 3 to 3.5 volts. In my case I wound two halves of five turns each, and the output voltage was about 17 volts, but under load it would be slightly less. The diameter of the wire is 1.2 mm. This is enough to get a decent current output. Calculations can be made using our mobile application. Links to the example of calculating a pulse transformer and the application itself you can find in the description. I tried to make the board as compact as possible. It, without problem, should get into the case of 18 volt nickel cadmium battery screwdriver without problems. But it may be necessary a little undercut the board. The assembled power supply can give off about 200 to 250 watts to the load. And if you use an extended type transformer, you can pump out much more from the unit. 
During this test, it is seen that with a load of 160 watts, we have quite a noticeable drawdown of the output voltage. But notice that the power components are without radiators, and they are very hot, thereby reducing the overall efficiency of the circuit. Well, it would be worthwhile to add the secondary winding by one turn. The load capacity of the power supply is very good. Not every unit will be able to work with these voracious lamps, whose filament resistance in the cold state is very low. The screwdriver can consume huge currents of 20 to 30 amperes from the battery and even 40 amperes if the cartridge is completely stopped. This power supply doesn't have any protection and can't withstand hard overloads. In order to avoid this, I strongly recommend that the effort controller on the screwdriver itself should never be placed in the maximum effort position. It's very important. Controller itself is your protection. The cooling conditions of our unit aren't so good. Transistors and the diode are necessarily installed on the radiators, and in the box are drilled holes for air cooling. A few words about the components. In this power supply, I eliminated input and output power filters to reduce the overall size. In principle, they aren't needed, since the load is a screwdriver, but not a power amplifier or other sensitive device. The capacitors of the half bridge are for 200 to 250 volts. Capacity is from 220 to 470 microfarad. Each capacitor is shunted by an equalizing resistor, which simultaneously discharges them after disconnecting the unit from mains. Such capacitors can also be taken from computer power supplies. Field effect transistors are any end channel with a current above 7 amperes for a voltage of 500 to 600 volts. Try to choose transistors with a small capacity of the gate and the resistance of the open channel. They are easier to control and will be heated less. A film separating capacitor with a capacitance of 1 to 1.5 microfarad is desirable to take with a calculated voltage of 400 volts. Well, could be 250 volts for an extreme case, if can't find other. The output rectifier is a powerful double shot diode. They can be found in computer power supplies. The reverse voltage of the assembly is 40 to 45 volts, and preferable to choose with more current. In the description under the video, you can find a link to the project archive with a PCB and links to my other videos about same purpose power supplies with the process of winding the pulse transformer. If you have additional questions, you can ask them in our social net group. Now, I say goodbye until new meetings with your words, Kassian TV.